Being a solo filmmaker can be awesome, but it can also lead you into disaster. Where are we? In Lipton. Packing to go up to Maine. Hey, what's up? I'm Christian, one filmmaker. Please subscribe to this channel and like this video. And now let's get back to why can solo filmmaking lead you into disaster? Let's talk about benefits. Being a solo filmmaker gives you a lot of freedom. It's up to you when you have your vacations, when to work, what projects to take on. And if you have enough projects, you can even choose your own salary. This means that I can go back to the States with my girlfriend whenever we want to. You're that famous vlogger. And I'm able to work out during work hours. It's no secret that as a successful filmmaker, you might have a pretty decent salary. Becoming rich! As a solo filmmaker, there is a chance that you might be able to work with super big brands. I am so lucky and proud to say that I've been working with Red Bull, Oakley, Norwegian Air, Sony Music, Audi and BMW. As a former athlete, these things make me so proud because those are my achievements. Those are my gold medals. Pika, are you ready? Woo! You have a vlog now? Yeah. It's always a vlog with Christine and me. No days are the same as a solo filmmaker. You'll get to meet new people, travel to new places, and you'll face new challenges every day. This is something I really appreciate because it never gets boring. The very same things that I just mentioned could also be the reason you're being led into a disaster as a solo filmmaker. So I only brought one pair of shoes to Maine, or at least normal shoes. I went out here because I thought it would be nice to make a video from this beautiful place. The water is not here anymore, it's gone for a little while. I thought it would be great to go out here and film. It was a good idea until I hit some wet spots and my shoes ended up like this and my feet are soaking wet but also very dirty. Being a solo filmmaker is very lonely. I don't have any colleagues, I'm working from home and the only living things at home are my dog and my cat. And even though I love them, I'm still not interacting with people. Uh, I love people. This is why it's been so important to me to have a great relationship with my clients. Because when I'm at a shoot or when I'm in a meeting with them, they are my colleagues. As a creative, there's also a chance that you're not super good with numbers and the financial part of running a business. This is why I've hired an accountant for myself so I don't have to deal with any of those things. My tasks are being creative, getting meetings and having client relationships. Christine, what's your favorite part of Thanksgiving? Eating. <laughs> Ellie. The people. Emily. Walks. Debbie. The day after. <laughs> <laughs> Being a solo filmmaker is very unpredictable. You don't know if you'll have your salary next month. You don't know if you'll have a project next month and you have no idea if this year will be better than the last year or maybe it won't even be as good. This again goes back to you being responsible and not knowing if your salary comes in next month or not can be very stressful. Now we are on our way back home to Littleton. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thanks. Results are in. Christine got herself ski boots. So if you don't like your life being unpredictable, being a solo filmmaker is probably not for you because this might be the hardest part. We're on the wrong side. First time riding a train in the US for me. What were you saying? It's gonna feel like you're going back 50 years. Apparently it takes one and a half hours to get into Boston and it takes 45 minutes to drive, which doesn't really make sense to me. <laughs> I remember going months 
without having a salary, without knowing if I would get a client within the nearest future. This unpredictable part about filmmaking actually had me question if this was the right path for me. Being a solo filmmaker also gives you less rights. You're probably not a part of a union, and if you are, you don't have the same rights as a person who's employed somewhere. You can't go to HR if the client treats you badly. Human Resources Department. And if you are unlucky enough to get injured and not being able to work for a while, the clients won't wait for you. I served my clients consistently. If you're very unlucky, they might find another provider in the meantime. If they hadn't fired me, that's what I'd be doing today. So, being a solo filmmaker, vulnerable. This unpredictable lifestyle mixed with the vulnerability and the no rights part have led several filmmakers into going in-house and just getting a job where you are safe. I hate this goddamn job and I don't need it! Having a real employer will make it less stressful for you. You will have better rights and you will know that you have a salary next month. And pension, and pension! All these things might lead to this disaster that I've been talking about, which is called a burnout. <sighs> I remember burning out the first year of being a solo filmmaker because I was working all the time, I was sleeping less, I was working out less, and my body just stopped. It was painful physically and hard mentally. All the stress and the pressure on delivering all the time and making sure your clients are happy and no one kind of telling you that now you should take it easy can be hard. Calm down. This is why I don't normally work after four and I try to keep my weekends open to do other things. Obviously there are exceptions, but I'm trying to make sure that I have enough time to work out, to sleep, spend time with my girlfriend and just take care of myself. So I guess the conclusion is that if you're a very social person I love people and you don't like having an unpredictable lifestyle and you don't like having to depend on yourself solely, then maybe being a solo filmmaker is not for you. I'm sure this is a great video of me eating and talking at the same time. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you love the challenge, if you love having a bit of an unpredictable everyday life, and if you're ambitious and love to get your dreams out there or feel like you've achieved something, then I think solo filmmaking is a great place to be. Ready to go home? Yes, but we'll be back soon. What do you think? What are the best parts about being a filmmaker? And what are the parts that you wish you didn't have to deal with? I'm a solo filmmaker and I'm happy with it. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.